Hello, everyone, and welcome again to Elevating Your Life. Oh, boy, we're going to have fun today. <laughs> I'm just so honored and grateful to share all of my amazing guests with all of you. Today, we have with us an amazing, amazing woman who I have talked to several times over the years. She's written several books, but we have um, Carmen Turner Schott, and she is the co-author with Bernie Ashman of the amazing book, Astrology's Magical Nodes of the Moon, Releasing the Past and Embracing the Future. And it's absolutely fantastic. Carmen is a practicing licensed clinical social worker, astrologer, writer, and teacher with a national and international clientele. She has been working as an astrological counselor and with victims of trauma for over 25 years. She completed her Master of Social Work at Washington University in St. Louis, Missouri. She has been researching the 8th and 12th astrological houses for the past 25 years. An 8th and 12th house person herself, she has personally experienced the energies and lessons of these two very spiritual transforming houses. She has presented astrology workshops for the Association of Research and Enlightenment throughout the years and teaches a variety of spiritual development classes. Her being a, a published author and her newest two books, Phoenixes and Angels, Mastering the Eighth and Twelfth, Astrological Houses and the Mysteries of the Twelfth Astrological House, Fallen Angels. I mean, you just you just keep going, Carmen. You just keep going. Welcome. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it's it's been busy and it's just amazing all the all the interesting people that I meet along the way. And then I've been just connecting with a lot of people that are wanting to write books together with me. And so I have like a list of other books on that are needing to be written and I just don't know when I'm going to do it but uh, going to partner oh. with some others and then Bernie um, Bernie Ashman is really a, a mentor of mine he's been in my astrology groups for years and and always encouraged me to write you know because he was an author and an astrologer since the 1970s he's he's uh, very uh, famous he's he's written uh, astrology software programs and so he's been a great resource and friend to me. And he really encouraged me to start writing uh, my books years ago. And he's like, let's write a book together. And so we thought we'd write just a simplistic guide about the nodes of the moon, because the North node in the birth chart is our soul mission this lifetime. And we thought that it was really important to really focus on that in astrology, because most people know their sun sign and their moon sign, but they don't realize what the North node is and how important that is in your astrology chart. And so we did this very simplistic guide. Like you don't have to be an astrologer to read our new book. You can pick it up and understand it. And we tell you in the introduction, what everything's about, what everything means, the energies of the signs and the planets and the houses. And then we tell you how to, how to do your free birth chart online and, and where to find the node. And then you look up your node and the house it's in, the sign it's in. You can look up your friends and family in our book. And it's real simple. And it gives, we give people tips, different tips that we've seen. And really just based on our years of experience doing astrological counseling, you know, these patterns that we would see. And we wrote this book together and it was pretty neat because the editor uh, that edited it, she's like, I couldn't really tell if it was you or Bernie that wrote it, because you write so similar, similarly, you know, so we yeah. write a lot, a lot. And we have this, we share the ideas and we agree, you know, so we wrote this book together and we're planning to write another book together in the future. So I'm really excited about that, but um, really excited to write this book for Collective Inc. And in the UK is our publisher. And um, just for people that are, that are listening to uh, the North Node, it looks like a pair of um, headphones, it, kind of like a like you're wearing headphones. And that's that's the soul mission this lifetime. The North Node is where your soul is going. Mm -hmm. And it means that we're meant to learn those traits. You know, we're meant to, um, it's new. It's, it's not where we're comfortable. 
we're comfortable in what's called the south node of the moon. The south node represents our past lifetimes, our past strengths, our things that our soul is used to doing. And it's second nature. Like, you know, and whatever sign the south node is in is the energy that we've mastered. And whatever house it's in is the area of life that we've we've shown that energy and mastered as well. So like, for instance, if you have the south node in uh, the seventh house, uh, let's say it's in cancer, you've learned to focus on having a marriage and partnership and a relationship and nurturing and taking care of your partner and other people. And this lifetime, the north node would be in the first house. And it would be um, in the house of being self-reliant and independent and not needing a partner and not having to rely on someone to do things to help you. So it's that's your learning is to be okay not having a relationship. So I call the those houses the relationship uh, karma, right, nodes. And, and then nurturing. Capricorn and Cancer is all about balancing your family with your career and your work which is what a lot of us try to do in our normal lives anyways. But when you have those nodes, you really have a lot of karma with family and feeling responsible for taking care of your mother, your father, your, your spouse, uh, your kids. And you're really learning to balance that with your own career goals and your own joy and your hobbies and, you know, the things you want to do. So everyone has uh, their nodes in a certain sign and in a certain house in the birth chart. And that is the, one of the most important things in your personality is knowing those nodes and learning to balance them. We say balance them because you don't ever give up your self node. It's not like you're supposed to stop being that way, but you are supposed to let go of some of the energies and I'm going to say stubbornness, you know, that some of us get in where we want things a certain way. And that's because we're comfortable doing it that way. We have to get out of our comfort zone with these nodes and it really start moving towards uh, the North node. And that's what we're learning. Oh, that is so amazing and so fascinating. Uh, for you, what's it been like for you delving into this and learning this and bringing this into your life? How, what kind of experience has that given you, Carmen? That's a great question. You know, it's so amazing because when I first started studying astrology, I didn't know what the nodes were. You know, I taught myself astrology when I was 16 and I started doing charts at 19. And when I was in my 20, mid twenties, I uh, probably, you know, late twenties is when I started realizing, wow, the North node is more important than anything that I've been studying because, you know, I started seeing it play out in my clients' lives and then my own life. And so what happened was when I realized that my North node was in Scorpio and my South node was in Taurus, I realized I had the nodes of what, what we call transformation, rebirth, healing, and also letting go and releasing the past. And I can't tell you how accurate that was for me when I read about my own nodes and, and um, there's not a ton of books out there about the nodes. There's only like, I can count them on one hand. And so the ones out there were amazing and they really explained it for me. And I realized, wow, I, I don't like change. I like comfort. I like stability, you know, cause that's Taurus. You like to know what's going to happen. You like to plan. You don't like crisis. You like peace and harmony. And that's what I like. And as you get older, as I got older, I had these things happen in my life that were very unsettling, you know, unexpected change, loss of loved ones, uh, people losing people, having to, you know, grieve and heal from that and, and what death means and that I'm a soul and all these really deep things would happen in my life. I realized, wow, this is Scorpio North Node. And I thought, how am I ever going to be a Scorpio? And I was worried about it. You know, I was, Paul, I thought, how am I going to be like that? Because it's so opposite of how I am. And that's what the nodes will be. It will feel very different and you won't really want to go there because it's not going to be comfortable. But the more that I started trying to become a Scorpio, which is letting change in my life, not being so stubborn and wanting, you know, uh, security and comfort, 
but allowing myself to 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 experience crisis and to be in the present moment and just feel and not try to make you know get things stable again but being okay with instability being okay with change um because that's life life is all about change so I had to adapt to that and when I did that I would say in 2018 was the first time that I finally realized that I was in my node and that I, why I had to be in my node because I had a lot of things happen I'll just say in my family and in my personal life and I was having a really hard time emotionally. And the reason is I was holding on to all those Taurus South Node traits. I didn't want change. I want, I was all about the past, connected to the past. I couldn't let it go, but I want things to be how they used to be, right? How they were. And that's not what was supposed to happen. But I realized I was walking and I was listening to headphones and I'm like, why is this happening to me? Why is this so hard? You know, and I, why am I going through this? And I, it's like, I heard this voice in my head say, how else will I make you a Scorpio? And when I heard that, I just laughed and then I cried, you know, happy tears, but mm -hmm. giggling. And I just bawled my eyes out. And I realized, of course, how am I going to be a Scorpio fully in my node if I don't have loss? If I don't have betrayal, if I don't have pain, if I don't have to lose things that are important to me, if I don't have to, you're right. And that's what makes you stronger. And that's why Scorpios are known to be the Phoenix bird. You know, they rise out of the ashes, transformed and forever changed emotionally, physically, mentally. That's their journey as a Scorpio and, and astrology. And so I knew I'm meant to be that. And, and, and it was a little scary, but now I know it. And as I get older, I realize that no matter what we do, we get into our North node regardless. So we can resist it all we want. It doesn't matter because the, the universe will get you into your North node by the time we are 61 years old. That's after our second Saturn return, which happens between the ages of 57 and 60. Everybody I have ever met and did a chart for or knew in my life, they're like, oh yeah, I've been there, done that. They're in their North Node fully doing their soul mission. They became that sign. They embraced it. They're doing it in that area of life. And they're like, oh yeah, I used to be like that in my South Node, but then this happened and now I'm in my Node and I'm doing this. And so I tell people, don't beat yourself up because it's a journey and the journey is all about balancing these two parts of our soul and, and getting where the universe needs us to go. And the universe will get us there no matter what through life experience, through triggers, you know, there's these life events that trigger and it gets us into our North node fully by the age of 61, we are in our node. So, so whether we don't worry try or not so i'm in my north mode i had no idea oh yes my gosh. you're doing it you're doing it and and i'm kind of getting in there too so this is what was funny um in 2018 to 2020 um when i was writing my my first my books that first got published sun signs houses and healing was my first one and I, before it was ever published, I had just written it over Christmas. I literally took two weeks off work and wrote a book and it just poured out of me. Well, my North node is in Scorpio, but guess what house it's in? The house of writing and communication and teaching. So I was meant to bring all this stuff I had studied for years and in past lives, ninth house, to a basic level. And I was meant to talk about it, teach it, write about it. So that's what I did. And, and that was my North node and, and it all happened. And now I'm writing books. I'm in my, in my North node in the third house. I'm learning, you know, this is all new. I'm doing podcasts. I'm doing classes. I'm doing all these things. And so, uh, you know, radio TV, I have a, a sun science, uh, signs in the sun, moon and stars on bold, brave TV, astrology show that I'm doing, you know, all of it is third house. And it's talking about deep mystical subjects that Scorpio, astrology, healing, you know, all these things. And so I'm in my node. I, I would say I'm not fully mastered my node yet, but I'm I'm definitely in my node and I'm getting used to it. And that's and I know by the time I'm 61, 
I will be been there, done that. Oh yeah, I'm a Scorpio now, you know? So right now I'm just, I'm, I'm still kind of balancing my Taurus and my Scorpio, you know, trying to get it in balance. But by the time I'm 61, I know that I'll be a full Scorpio. I'll be a full North Node Scorpio and I I, I will be a lot stronger than and, and, and resilient because that's kind of the nodes of Taurus Scorpio. They're, they have a lot of change in their life. They have to sacrifice things. Um, but it all happens to make them more resilient. And, you know, each of the of the signs uh, pairs have their own learning. You know, every node, every signs pair has their own learning. And so I got my little cheat sheet here um, just for people that might be listening. So, um, you know, in 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 astrology, every sign has a polar opposite sign that's always in the sky across from them you know the star constellations and so when you look at the nodes the nodes of the moon are always going to be um opposite signs okay number one and so if you have for instance there's 12 signs in astrology um every 12 so there's six pairs so aries their polar opposite is libra so if your node, if you have a node uh, in Aries or Libra, it's always going to be one of those the opposite, right? That you're balancing. You're balancing Aries Libra uh, in your node in your soul mission. Aries Libra is the the karmic learning of relationships. What does it mean to compromise? What does it mean to sacrifice for other people's needs over your own? What does it mean to be self reliant and independent and not need a partner? These are the lessons that the Aries Libra nodes are learning and balancing, right? Speaking up and using their voice, speaking up for themselves, not just going along and pleasing everyone else, but having their own opinions, you know, this Aries Libra balance. Then we have Taurus. Taurus's polar opposite is Scorpio. They're polar opposites. Um, and when you hear polar opposites, people think that means they're different. They are a little bit different, but they're highly compatible. Because they share similar uh, traits, similar health vulnerabilities. They also are always a compatible element. So, you know, Aries is fire, Libra is air. All the polar opposites are compatible elements. So fire and air always oppose each other, the signs. And earth and water signs always oppose each other. And if you think of nature, it makes sense because air helps fire grow. Water lives on the earth, right? It, it's in unison. And so uh, compatibility wise, you know, who do you get along best with is really when you look at these elements too, these polar opposites are really good matches, you know, in relationships. So, so Taurus is earth, Scorpio's water. And these are the nodes of healing, letting go, forgiveness, embracing change, right? Um, learning what is most valuable to you. You know, is it money? Is it your health? Is it your spiritual path? You know, these nodes really get you in touch with your soul mission and that you're here for a purpose. And then we have Gemini, Sagittarius, they're polar opposites. And Gemini's air and Sagittarius is fire. Gemini, Sag is both love to learn. They're the, the nodes of learning and communication. So they're learning how to express themselves through words, writing, teaching, radio, study, higher education, travel. They love to travel. So these are the nodes of the traveler, the free spirit. A lot of them love to go overseas, visit different uh, countries, different cultures. You know, that's kind of their, their learning. And, and they often live in a, in a country or somewhere far from where they were born. That's something I see with people with Gemini Sagittarius nodes. They, they, they move or they live somewhere very different than they were, where they were raised. And they love to travel, love to be seeing new things. And they're, they're adventurous, right? Mm -hmm. Then you have the Cancer Capricorn nodes. Cancer's uh, water and Capricorn's earth. And these are the nodes of family karma, okay? These are the nodes where you have a lot of lessons with your home and family, your own parents, your grandparents, where you were raised, your own spouse, your own children, and then balancing your career, your success, what you want to do for work with the home. So these are the nodes of balancing that, right? And sometimes the family has to come first with these nodes. And then maybe your career comes later, or you, you have to sacrifice your, your, your work to take care of your parents or your home. 
So there's there's that kind of karmic energy that can play out with the Cancer Capricorn nodes. And then Leo Aquarius, they're the nodes, uh, you know, Leo's fire, Aquarius is air. These are the nodes of self-expression. So it's about believing in yourself and your abilities and your and your artistic creative talents. So a lot of them are here to um, to lead and to stand out and to express what they really think and feel and to be respected and, and be on stage. You know, Leo's are the entertainers. Um, they're musical, theater, right? Uh, teaching, working with children, but also being a leader, being in charge, being authoritarian, you know, respected. Um, politician, you know, political energy, Leo, right? Um, and they're loving and they're fun, loving and generous. And then Aquarius is innovative and, and intelligent. And they both like their freedom. They both like to feel free and have independence, right? In, in their relationships. And then there's Virgo, Pisces are the last match. Virgo is earth and Pisces is water. These are the nodes of spiritual service and practical service. So when the nodes are in Virgo and Pisces, the, they almost everyone I ever meet with these nodes, they usually are natural teachers. They love to learn. They love to talk and communicate. They love to teach. They love to write. And they also love to help people. So they often go into the helping professions like uh, medical profession, nursing, social work, um, you know, all of those kind of caretaker uh, fields and uh, meditation, yoga, health, diet, alternative medicine, Reiki. They all are interested in that wholeness and wellness of the body. You know, physical health is big with these nodes, making sure they balance and protect their energy and that they take care of their body and their health. So those are the pairs real quick to give a little uh, fun wow. synopsis. But Wow. And so, you know, with learning our nodes and realizing that, then can that, you know, make a difference in our karma and our personal empowerment what are are some of the benefits of educating ourselves on this yeah i think the biggest the biggest thing that i like to share with people is that astrology is energy and astrology is what i call a map of the soul and it is a tool that i use as a social worker it's a tool just like there's many tools right there's there's four lenses, there's Myers-Briggs, you know, there's all these, uh, you know, uh, human design, you know, there's all these different tools that people can use to understand themselves and others better, their personality. And to me, that's what astrology is. It's it's an amazing, deep personality tool that is very accurate. And I believe that's because it's it's energy and we are energy and we're a soul. And I believe that, you know, it was created since the ancient times. Astrology has been used in ancient cultures in the Bible. I mean, it's, it's, it's a science and, and it never changes because it's based on uh, tropical astrology. Western is based on the seasons of the year. So I always say just to, to know your own birth chart, number one is not a bad thing. And at least get a, a reading once about your chart or, you know, you can learn on your own, but it's really important because it gives you, it's like all this information, um, it's like, a, you know, they say an unexamined dream is like an un, an unopened letter has all this uh, important information in it. I say the same thing about astrology. It Your your astrology chart is like sitting there just waiting for you to, to validate your life experience, to validate your emotional nature. It can be validated with the moon sign. You're like, oh, yeah, that's how I feel inside. Mm -hmm. Everything gets validated. Right. And that's why people often tell me. Well, I don't really believe in astrology, but that is interesting because I am like that. And I tell people, you don't have to believe in astrology to know that astrology is affecting you every day, regardless if you believe in it or not. Yeah. Because it is it is the solar system. We are on Earth. It's the universe. It's the stars. It's the it's the it's the energy of the of the of the constellations of the planets that are impacting us every day. Just like the moon affects the tides of the ocean. It yes. affects our menstrual cycles. It affects our, our mood. It is, that's why the moon sign is our emotional nature, our mood, how we feel inside. And it's, it's a science. So I tell people just learn the basics. You know, you can go to astro.com. You can contact me through my website at karmaturnershot.com. And I can send you a free birth wheel. If you don't know how to do it, or you just want, you know, to learn a little more. 
Um, and that way I can tell you, you know, where your North node is, your South node is. I don't mind to do that. I just did that. I was on a show the other day and I had several people write me and, and I told them where their nodes were, how, how to get a free birth chart, you know, things like that. And, and I'm all about helping people learn this tool that to me is my passion because it helped me understand why I was the way I was and why I was so different and why I felt so different and why I dream things that happen, why I'm intuitive, why I'm emotional. You know, it, it just validated all of my life, yeah. the experiences in my life. And, 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 and when I do cl sessions for clients, you know, they tell me the same thing that it really, you know, it really validates their life. And I just think that it's a tool that can really help us. It's a tool that can really help us. It's so awesome. And that is so awesome how you are helping others to do this. Oh my gosh, Carmen, we have two minutes left in the show. What last words do you want to share with everybody before we go? Sure. Um, you know, my, my whole philosophy is astrology um, can help us heal, transform, and become more resilient. That's how much I believe in it. And my last words are, please do your free birth chart online or contact me because I really, I think if you know what your North node of the moon is and your South node of the moon is, you will resonate with that. And, and you can learn tips and things that will help make your life so much easier to get into what your soul mission is. And if you're like, what is the purpose of my life? What is my soul mission? Which everyone asks me that, everyone I meet. And, and the nodes of the moon will tell you, it won't be me, Carmen Schott, Carmen Turner Schott tell you, it'll be astrology sharing and imparting that wisdom because it is the nodes that reveal why your soul chose to come into this physical realm again, to learn, to master the North node. And that's why you're here and you're going to get there no matter what. So let's learn about it early. Let's start trying to become more like that sign. That's what I'm doing. Try to become like a Scorpio to make my life a little easier to get into that mission that God has wanted me to get into mm -hmm. and what the universe is wanting you to learn. And, and it's all about learning. So that's my, you know, my uh, last uh, imparting wisdom yeah. is don't be afraid to, to, to explore astrology. A lot of people are afraid of astrology because they think it's too hard to learn or too complex because it's symbols and all this, but you can learn the basics and you don't have to study and be a master. You can have someone do a psychological consultation. That's what I do. I call it psychological astrology. I tell you things and validate your energy and your, and your, your strengths, oh. your talents, all of those things. I love That's it. What I, I love it. Oh, Carmen, this, this is so awesome. And, and I want to know my soul purpose. I'm so excited. Thank you so much for everything today. I'm so grateful. And thank you for everyone for joining us. Love, hugs, and blessings to everyone. Talk soon. This has been so great, Carmen. Thank you, Paula.